Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we begin our meditation. Amen. I'd like to share, uh, leading into the message today for our loved one, Psalm 73, verses 23 to 26. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Dear friends and family of Angela, you know there are very way, various ways in life of getting from point A to point B. We all know that. And often how you get there is not necessarily the main question. It's whether or not you get there that really matters in the end. In other words, people you know, often ask, for example, what's the real bottom line here? What has to be done to make this happen? Coaches often say that, you know, that winning the game is the bottom line for them. Now, the win may not have been pretty, but it's a win. It goes in the win column. A 6-3 win in football can be kind of boring to just watch three field goals. A 13-12 win in baseball, um, you know, can be exciting, but it's not pretty because the pitching was probably terrible. May not have been played very well, but it's a win. The coach says, I'll take it. The team will take it. It counts as a victory. This text in Psalm 73 is a beautiful expression of the confidence a true child of God can have no matter what. It's a cherished psalm because it gives us a very vivid picture of the hard road and rough road in this Christian pilgrimage that we have on earth. The writer earlier in the psalm did confess, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. And he envied those who seemed to have no problems around them, feeling that the wicked often fared much better than he did. So bewildered and perplexed, he entered the sanctuary of God. And he then said, I understand now their final destiny. Suddenly it became clear that the important issue was not the situation of the moment, because it was bad. What really counted was what happens in the final end, eternal life. Because that's the bottom line, isn't it? When it comes right down to it, eternal life in heaven. Angela, our loved one, has ended her earthly journey at the age of 39. And obviously we all say that's way too young in our estimation. It's not old by anybody's standards now. And we think, why? Why at this age? The journey, especially these past few years, was not easy. It was a hard one, as a matter of fact. Life circumstances, life choices, and certain things that happened. It was a very tough road. It was a very difficult road. Gradually, things took their toll. There were setbacks. And in a world of sin, there's going to be setbacks of various kinds. And those setbacks can really take their toll in the end. We do not know why one experiences certain things and sometimes and somebody else doesn't. It's hard for us to understand. There are a lot of things this side of eternity we will not have questions or we will not have answers for those questions. It's okay to raise the questions to God and speak to God about them. But in reality... A lot of those answers we won't have this side of eternity. But we continue to ask. 
We do know that all of us, at some point, in one way or another, will succumb to bodily death. The wages of sin is death, after all, and nobody escapes it. Due to our sin, nobody gets away from the grip of death. But I want to come back to the theme of the bottom line. What in the end should we make sure and vocalize and emphasize was achieved? Mental health, physical health, spiritual health, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on physical and mental health as we should. What about spiritual health? Spiritual health is very, very important. It's our spiritual health and our faith in Christ that leads us to that heavenly reward. And again, I go back to the psalm in 73. The psalmist said, My flesh and my heart may fail. And yes, indeed they do at some point. But God is the strength of my heart. And God is the, my portion forever. The counsel of God and his holy word teaches us that Angela and all of us do not ultimately belong to this world. God is always in the process of leading us to where we truly belong, our eternal home. Compared to heaven, earth is indeed nothing but a veil of tears. There's really no comparison. I mean, we can sit down and try to compare earth to heaven. There's, a, there's no way to do that because in heaven, things are perfect. There's no struggle. There's no setbacks. There's no pain. There's no anger. The counsel of God teaches us that the bottom line is what Paul said. When Paul knew that his time may be short, he said, I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far, he said. Better by far. From birth until death, God had Angela in his grip and he loved her and he didn't let go of her and through her baptism and her confirmation and through her faith he made his presence known to her granting her forgiveness of her sins and her setbacks which otherwise would keep her and all of us out of the heavenly realms God's plan for Angela and mankind was a solution to sin and involve the giving up as of his own son on the cross for her sins and for mine and for everybody's so that we might be able to experience <clears throat> eternal life. Max Lucado is a Christian author and he, uh, he wrote about flaws and mistakes in one of his books and he said he moved into a new house one time and the builder told him, you go make a list <clears throat> of the flaws and mistakes that you find in that house, and you, you give me that list. So he said, okay, and he began to, to put together this long list of items that were wrong. Bedroom door didn't lock. Storage room window was cracked pretty badly. No towel racks in the girl's bathroom. No knobs on the door to the den. And so he continued to make this long list of things that were wrong. And Lucano thought about, as he made the list, what kind of a list God could make as he moved into his heart. And he thought of things like the door hinges to the prayer room are pretty rusty from underuse. And the stove that we might call jealousy is overheating. And the attic floor is full of too many regrets. The cellar is cluttered with secrets. And the more he thought about the flaws, the more he Turn to the words of Paul in Colossians 2, where we're told there, He, God, took it all away and nailed it to the cross. Every single one of us during our life on earth is deeply flawed by sin. But for the believer in Christ, that changes 
that ultimately changes. And when we move into our new house after this life, as Angela has, there won't be a list of things that need fixing anymore for her. Not only is it going to be perfect from the beginning, but so will we be perfect from the beginning. Far more than what we experience in this life, we have the hope of the resurrection. Our courage and our strength eventually do fail, but we know that one day we will be raised to life to serve our Lord forever, and he therefore is our security, and we must cling to him and not let go. It's not because of what Angela did or didn't do in her life that she is now pain-free and no more worries or concerns. And it's nothing that she did or didn't do that has her now experiencing eternal life with her Savior. It's because of the blood shed on the cross for the forgiveness of her sins. And so he therefore is our security. Christ paid the ultimate price on our behalf. He was nailed to the cross so we didn't have to be. And because of his resurrection on Easter morning, we too shall live. The Apostle Paul knew when his end was near, and in 2 Timothy 4, he said, the time has come for my departure. And the Greek word translated as departure is anoluseo, and that suggests a couple of things I think that are important. Because the verb luseo means to loose or to liberate or to set free. And the prefix ana suggests the beginning of a journey. Or to use the language of a seaman, the anchor has been raised and the voyage is about to begin. Angela recently ended her earthly journey here. It's very sad for survivors, family, friends, and acquaintances. There's no getting around that. Grief is grief. But remember that Christians grieve differently. Christians grieve not as people who have no hope, Christians grieve as people with hope. Hope of making a better life for the rest of our earthly journey, for others and for ourselves, and the hope of eternal life and joining Angela in the heavenly realms one day when our time has come. She began recently, even though her earthly journey ended far too soon. Her heavenly journey has now begun, and it's one that's going to last forever. Just a word about heaven, because there are so many questions about heaven that we really don't have answers to. Uh, we would like to know those answers, but we, we don't know a lot about it. But I want to give you a real quick um, brief explanation of, of heaven one time. As a sick man had went to see a doctor, and he was, the sick man was ready to leave the examination room and he had, was quite ill. And he said, Doctor, I'm afraid I might die. Tell me what lies ahead for me if I do. And the doctor said very quietly, Sir, I don't know. And he was surprised. He said, What do you mean you don't know? You're, you're a Christian man. I know that. Why don't you have an answer for me? The doctor happened to be holding the handle of the door <clears throat> to the examination room at the time. And on the other side, there came this sound, a sound of scratching and whining. And then he went ahead and opened the door, and a dog sprang suddenly into the room, to the man's surprise. And he leaped on the owner with the doctor with an eager show of gladness. And he turned to the patient. The doctor said, did you see what just happened? Did you notice what my dog did? He's never been in this room before, by the way. He didn't know what was inside. He knew nothing 
except his master was in here on the other side. And when the door opened, he sprang in, and he sprang in without any fear or hesitation. The doctor concluded by telling the patient, I know very little of really is what on is what on the other side is what is on the other side of heaven, called heaven, but I do know one thing, he said. I know my master is there. And that is enough for me. The psalmist in Psalm 84 somewhat parallels our text today when he says in verse 2, My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. We gather and mourn our loved one's earthly departure today. We will be going through grief. Grief is a process. There's going to be ups and downs with it. There's going to be days when you're extremely sad, and there'll be days when you're better because of certain circumstances going on that day. But I encourage you to do a couple of things. First of all, pray. Pray to God that He will give you strength. Pray daily that he will give you strength to meet the challenges of the grief process. He will answer that prayer. Now, secondly, how does he answer that prayer? He answers that prayer in um, various ways. One way he, that he answers that prayer is to bring families together. Sometimes families split apart because of a death. Let that not happen. May families come together tighter and closer than ever right now. Lean on each other. Support one another. Do everything you can for one another as you have need. Surround yourself with supportive families. Surround yourself with supportive friends. There, don't have to, there doesn't have to be a lot of those friends, just good ones dependable ones, ones you can count on through, as they say, thick and thin, who will be there for you no matter what. Utilize them. God has sent you those friends as gifts. Those are gifts from God. Lean on them. Use them. Let them help you. And finally, don't be surprised if God, who works in mysterious ways, in this grief journey helps you someday when there is no family or friend around but maybe a stranger a stranger that you've never met before in your life that you run into because of whatever circumstance it might be and all of a sudden God has that stranger doing something for you or saying something to you that is just exactly what you needed at that time don't be surprised if God does that. He will get you through this. And he will use various means to do it. Remember what the bottom line is. It's eternal life in heaven with God and with those we love. May we keep in mind in the rest of our journey on earth that heavenly perspective as God guides us through this process of grief and as he guides us through this maze of life and its challenges so that someday we like Angela will receive a crown of glory whenever our course on earth has ended God grant it to us for the sake of Jesus Christ Amen